Hi everyone, this is going to be a very short PowerPoint and um, it's going to, you're going to need it for your assignment in class tomorrow. If you have lab tomorrow, you'll need information at the end of the screencast to do your assignment for the lab tomorrow in class. All right, so this is section three, coastal impacts and invasives. So freshwater ecosystems as well as saltwater ecosystems are under major threats. threats. Think HIPCO, habitat destruction, invasive species, human population explosion, pollution, climate change, and over-exploitation. So 40% of the world's rivers are dammed, which cause serious issues. Many freshwater wetlands are destroyed. We have invasive species everywhere. We have a lot of threatened species. We have overfishing, and we have lots of human population pressures. Invasive species are an increasing threat to marine and freshwater biodiversity. So bio-invaders are blamed for about two-thirds of the fish extinctions in the U.S. between 1900 and 2000. Okay, so just in 100 years. One example is um, in zebra mussels. They were brought in from Russia and in 1988 in ballast water. So that's the water that boats um, load up with in one spot to weigh them down so that they can sail more efficiently. And then when they get to the place that they're going, what they do is they release the water. So in Russia, what they did was that boat sucked in water so that it could travel to the U.S., the Great Lakes. And then what it did was when it was in the Great Lakes, it expelled that water and then it loaded cargo on the ship. Um, these zebra mussels have caused a billion dollars in damage. They clog everything. They grow insanely fast. They're filter feeders so they can improve the quality of the water to a degree. So the Great Lakes water is a lot healthier than it has been in the past because of these filter feeders. However, um, they cause millions and billions of dollars in um, upkeep because these barnacles uh, or these mussels have to be scraped off the bottoms of boats to intake valves and infrastructure and everything like that. So this is a, a case study of how carp have muddied some waters. So in Wisconsin, um, they can, there's an invasive species um, of purple loosestrife, which is a plant, and then the common carp has been introduced. And um, what this Dr. Richard Lathrop did was remove carp from an area of the lake, and that area seemed to recover. So it seems that the carp cause lots and lots of turbidity in the water, which affects the amount of sunlight getting through and the amount of photosynthesis that actually occurs. So if you look here, you can see that this area that was roped off, you can see it's, it's black over here, but that's actually the bottom, that's the substrate. And here you can actually see the bottom. So this area is much more clear than the area around that the carp were not removed from. So they literally muddy the water. Uh, Lake Victoria in Africa, you have loss of biodiversity and these ancient species of fish called chicklets. Uh, the Nile perch were deliberately introduced into this lake. And now what happens is there are frequent algal blooms because of nutrient runoff. They're spilled because of untreated sewage. And these algae eating chicklets, so these native fish used to eat all sorts of algae. And now that these Nile perch were introduced, they eat all of these little native chicklets and the pollution is growing. Also, the waterways are clogged with water hyacinths which were introduced, most likely for aesthetic reasons. Okay, so this is the Nile perch. Lake Victoria um, is in that corner spot of Uganda, Kenya, uh, and Tanzania. And they were introduced so that people could fish them and have something to eat because they grow to these huge sizes, which is great for people to be able to have fish, to be able to fish. Okay? And these are actually water hyacinths that clog this waterway. So when you have um, this massive mat of plants on the top, the oxygen exchange is very low and it also blocks the sunlight. So it causes a lot of eutrophication and low oxygen in the water. Okay. Uh, lionfish are crazy, absolutely crazy. I'm going to send you either one of these videos or um, a different one. Um, I'd like something about four minutes for you guys to watch. But lionfish are absolutely crazy and um, they were in Florida and now they're making their way up the coast and now they're even starting to be found in New Jersey. Okay. So Wednesday, um, if you have lab tomorrow, what you guys are gonna be doing is working on a benthic macro invertebrate bag. So what you need is you need two bags. Okay, oh look, making a flower. Um, and your bags are going to be marked. So this particular bag is A. 
what you're going to do is you're going to take all of your stream samples out. So it says stream sample A here as well. And what you're going to do is you are going to clump your organisms. So all of these look the same. These two guys look the same. These two guys look the same. And then what you're going to do is once you have them, you are going to take a look at the key and identify what they are. So these guys right here, you see, they're amphipods, otherwise known as scuds. You're going to go to your biomonitor data sheet in the pack that you're going to get. I think it's on page two. Nope, it's on page three. And what you're going to do is you're going to mark what you have. So you have scud and you actually have six of them. So if we go back to the previous slide, oh, we can't, you'll see that you count the individuals. So this would be one, two, and then there were three, four, five, six. They may have been on same sheets or different sheets, but you don't count the cards. You count how many individuals there actually are. Okay. So if you notice, we mark that we have scuds, okay, which are right here. I drew the line and that there are six of them. Okay. This is not representative for all of A. This is just one example. Then to tally, what you're going to do is to total the number of species, which is boxes. So we only have one checked box. Okay. And then you're going to multiply your value by three. It's different. This one you're going to multiply by four. The one on the bottom, I think, is number two. And then you're going to follow the direction. Okay. Um, you're going to fill out your whole sheet, and then you're going to do it for a different stream sample. So when you're done, put all of your little organisms back in the bag and trade it for a different number. Okay. When you are done, you are going to do the post lab questions one through six. That's it, one through six only. And then when you are done with that, you are going to complete your pre-lab questions, okay? All of that should be no problem to be able to do in your lab period. And I would like your um, labs to stay in class. So you will be handing them in at the end of class, okay? Fantastic.